Doc here to help you with residence questions where the graphs look really scary. Well, a residence graph is one that plots the response along the vertical axis, the response of a system when you drive it, you wiggle it in some way. And these are your frequencies. Always remember when you have a graph in any course that you take, whether it's economics or accounting or physics, know what is plotted on the vertical and the horizontal axis. Here we plot the response, how the system responds to different frequencies. So you drive it at a frequency that's low, it doesn't have much of a response. If you drive it at a high frequency, super high over here, it has even less of a response, it goes to zero. But if you drive it in the middle at some intermediate frequency, the thing goes crazy. And there's where you see these graphs. So this is this here's a series of graphs for different systems. They're changing something here, perhaps the, the constant, uh, the stiffness of the spring and some oscillation. So let's look at some questions. Suppose you're asked where the resonance frequency is. Well, you'd have to be told which graph because there's there's several resonant graphs here. What you would do is find where the peak is, say if I'm looking at this graph here, wherever the peak is, and then come on down here and read your frequency. How do I know to do that? Because I know my axis here is the frequency axis. Uh, the one they have shown here is this one up here, and it looks like it agrees pretty much with this uh, second one. If you go drop down to the axis, that's your frequency. Now they're doing some frequency ratio. I don't care what they do here. I just know this number here that's underneath where that peak is, is going to be my resonance frequency or some measure of the resonance frequency here. They're normalizing it. They're dividing by some frequency to get one. That's don't get distracted with that. Uh, here is your resonance frequency measured down here. Then we look at the amplitude of the response, and then I would look at the vertical axis. So if you want the uh, response for, say, this case here, this one, I would just come over here, just read my graph, and come over here to the left, over to the left. And I don't really care about these units. They're doing something fancy here. They're doing something fancy here. These are actually uh, a ratio of two frequencies so that there is really no dimension here. Uh, there's no hertz because you're comparing it the ratio, but I don't care about that. Don't get distracted. Just read the number that's down here. That's going to be a measure of your frequency for the resonance. And your measure for the amplitude is going to be over to the left, whatever that is, 3.3 for this height and whatever units they're, they're using there. So then we go to another question. If the tension in the restoring force should increase in the system, what happens to the resonance peak? And that's a tip difficult question that's a little bit tricky if the string should get stiffer what happens boing it wants to vibrate quicker so that means that you're going to have to drive it at a quicker frequency a higher frequency to get it to go crazy so the peak in that case would shift to the right where you would need a higher frequency